Delighted to welcome CEO John Thompson. John, welcome. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to experience in the next few minutes. Well, thanks, Dave. It's, it's much appreciated. And, and I'd like to thank our guests for attending today to celebrate what is a two-year term of office for our new APHC president. Um, we've got a new look ceremony today at Installer Show, which is very much about bringing our trade association, which is totally nice from 1925 into the modern era. Um, and I'd very much like to thank Installer Show for providing us the opportunity to actually host the event today as part of our value partnership. So what I'd like to do is hand over to Dave, who's got Andy Baxter, our new incoming president with him. And Andy's gonna tell us a few bits about himself. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Andy, new incoming president, how does that feel? Oh, fantastic. It's now been three hours and two minutes uh, <laughs> since I was uh, allowed to take up this prestigious position. Um, I'm looking forward to it, it's challenging times. And just to be in this position, I feel extremely privileged yeah. really privileged you know and happy to be in this position in that three hours two and a half minutes now does it uh, does it bring a whole sense of responsibility to you at all yeah of course it does but you don't do that without doing the homework doing the footwork working along uh, people in the APHC I've been a member for years I've read the benefits of that, that membership so you don't run into this blindly you ask the right questions like John said the APHC has modernized um, in recent years so this is why it's another exciting time to allow me to have a little bit of a voice on their behalf and on behalf of installers. Now, when, when selecting a president, it's not like the Pope with a bit of white smoke and black smoke, is it? I mean, I don't know how... How do you know? Well, oh, yeah. how, did I, how yeah. did I know? Look, look, on a serious note, tell us a little bit about your background in the industry and your context around you. Well, I've, I've been in the industry 44 years and I keep meeting people, especially uh, around the table over the last 24 hours who've been in a little bit longer than I have and some who just joined in the industry. So um, my family was in the fuel industry, coal merchants, for over 100 years until the 1960s. And my father always said, whatever you do, get into fuel. It's always going to be there. It's always needed, heating and hot water. So I took the plunge and instead of going into the army in 1979, I joined British Gas, did a British Gas apprenticeship and finished in 1983. Worked through the process from a service engineer installer and then worked in the commercial sector but my family background was working for myself so in 1996 i followed my dad's advice and my granddad's advice when they were alive to say work for yourself so i set up a sole trader started working the process through and the business being a sole trader we got it into a successful situation but then i did something which i felt really strange i hit the 40 wall and at 40 in 2002, I got a little bit lost with the industry. So I literally walked away, passed it over to my brother and went into further education. I wanted to, at that time, give something back to the industry because somebody had given me that opportunity. So after that, when I was in further education, I then got poached to retrain miners coming out of the pits up in Yorkshire, right. which was fantastic. It was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, but while that was happening, I saw the... Really, on the, the onslaught of condensing boilers, what do I do? Do we ignore it? Do I stay where we are? So I asked my boss, my wife, to come into business with me. We set up High Efficiency Eating UK in 2004, and we've literally never looked back. We uh, embraced the condensing boiler era. RHI come along in 2008, 2009, with the first MCS registered people in Manchester. We embraced that till the RHI fizzled out. Uh, but we continue fitting heat pumps along this pier. So, yeah, we, we, we're pretty strong. That's my background in the industry, 44 years. It, it, it strikes me that you're someone who enjoys his work. Uh, you, you have a passion for it. I have passion. I believe in it. The passion, this work has given me so much. It's, I've got my family here today, which I feel very lucky to have. It's, it's helped support them. It's helped support me. I'm no different than the vast majority of people in here, installers, okay? I know what this trade can do what it's achieved for me. I am passionate about it. I believe in what I say. There's not many presidents around the world who are very popular at the moment. So, but what made you take up the role of president? Again, doing a little bit of a background work and seeing this opportunity, John and the board of directors offered me that opportunity. I can see, like I mentioned before, where the APHC is modernized. So I thought it'd be really good to step into this area. So I've got a good background from a, my own business point of view. That working uh, 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 along with a body like the APHC will give me an opportunity 
to express my views. I'm not going to be right all the time. Listen to people. So, yeah, it's, a, it's that opportunity, really. I think you said it's a two-year term, is that it's right? It's a two-year term, yes. Right, OK. And so what do you see about the issues of the moment and those things you're going to be taking on over the next couple of years? Bear in mind, we've only got two days left. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, this, this, the normal issues, I think we all suffer from it, and, and I mean suffer from it, installers. Number one, training. Training of new entrants to um, plumbing and heating, colleges. I think the substance is there, but the delivery is kind of wrong. Now, I can take into account COVID and coming over to this. But as a quick example, we just had a young engineer who passed last September at college. We had work waiting for him. He's only just in June last week got his final accreditation because his college staff didn't have the staff to work it through, his endpoint assessment. So new entrants to the field. And what about companies, small companies, who can, they need these young apprentices, but how can they keep them on? How can they re not only just keep them training, but retain that staff? How many people are saying that apprentices keep walking? But do little small businesses get enough government support for that? So if it's things like that I want to try and get, you know, make a difference find out, see if we can do things. The other thing is net zero. <laughs> look, look, at, look at where we've got to go on there. Yeah. Now again on net zero, we've got the heat pump issue. Heat pump's perfect for the right application. What about the other application? I live in Manchester, Coronation Street, I might as well live there. You know, terraced houses, terraced houses, terraced houses. How do we help Mrs. Smith, who may be not yeah, eligible yeah. for a grant, yeah, but yeah, she just yeah. needs this extra help and the advice that's needed for her. How can we as installers, what do we advise them? Yeah, yeah. You know, installers are in a lost field at the moment. You know, so how can that make a difference? So I'm going to try my best to do that. And finally, the accreditation process for fitting renewable energy, for installing the renewable energy. It's like going on a, a cruise ship from Southampton to New York, but you've got to refuel in Antarctica. You know, you're going all over the place with it. That has to be streamlined, that has to change. I heard the NCS gentleman before just mentioning that. APHC, they're on with it. They've been consulting people. Graham Dryden, um, a good guy in the APHC. He's been asking installers the right questions. So we're hoping over the next co couple of months to push that a little bit further and hopefully we might have some good news on that. Brilliant. Well, look, um, I reckon you've got only got about one year, 364 days and 21 hours left yeah. to have any effect. So can I wish you and the First Lady uh, of the President, wish you the very best of luck. Uh, and John, let me hand it back to you to close. Exactly. Well, thanks ever so much for that enlightening discussion, Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you to raise your glasses in a toast to Mr. Andy Baxter, the APHC President. Yeah. Andy yeah. Baxter. Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you very much, guys. Good luck Mr. with everything. President. Mr. President. <laughs> Congratulations.